chapter 48. 48, right? right? Yes. Krishna pleases his devotees. For days together, Krishna heard from Uddhava all the details of his visit to Vrindavan, especially the condition of his father and mother and of the gopis and the coward boys. Lord Krishna was fully satisfied that Uddhava was able to solace them by his instructions and by the message delivered to them. Lord Krishna then decided to go to the house of Kubja, the hunchback woman who had pleased him by offering him sandalwood pulp when he was entering the city of Mathura. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna always tries to please his devotees as much as the devotees try to please Krishna. As the devotees always think of Krishna within their hearts, Krishna also thinks of his devotees within himself. When Kudja was converted into a beautiful society girl, she wanted Krishna to come to her place so that she could try to receive and worship him in her own way. Society girls generally try to satisfy their clients by offering their bodies for the men to enjoy. But this society girl, Kubja, was actually captivated by a lust to satisfy her senses with Krishna. When Krishna decide, desired to go to the house of Kubja, he certainly had no desire for sense gratification. By supplying the sandalwood pulp to Krishna, Kubja had already satisfied his senses. On the plea of her sense gratification, however, he decided to go to her house, not actually for sense gratification, but to turn her into a pure devotee. Krishna is always served by many thousands of goddesses of fortune. Therefore, he has no need to satisfy his senses by going to a society girl. But because he is kind to everyone, he decided to go there. It is said that the moon does not withhold its shining from the courtyard of a crooked person. Similarly, Krishna's transcendental mercy is never denied to anyone who has rendered service unto him, whether through lust, anger, fear, or pure love. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is stated that if one wants to serve Krishna and at the same time wants to satisfy his own lusty desires, Krishna will handle the situation so that the devotee forgets his lusty desires and becomes few, fully purified and constantly engaged in the service of the Lord. To fulfill his promise, Krishna, along with Uddhava, went to the house of Kubja, who was very eager to get Krishna for the satisfaction of her lusty desires. When Krishna reached her house, he saw that it was completely decorated in a way to excite the lusty desires of a man. This suggests that there were many nude pictures, on top of which were canopies and flags, embroidered with pearl necklaces, along with comfortable beds and cushioned chairs. The rooms were provided with flower garlands and were nicely scented with incense and sprinkled with scented water, and the rooms were illuminated by nice lamps. When Kubja saw that Lord Krishna had come to her house to fulfill his promised visit, she immediately got up from her chair to receive him cordially. Accompanied by her many girlfriends, she began to talk with him with great respect and honor. After offering him a nice place to sit, she worshipped Lord Krishna 
in a manner just suitable for her position. Uddhava was similarly received by Kubja and her girlfriends, but he did not want to sit on an equal level with Krishna, and thus he simply sat down on the floor. As one usually does in such situations, Krishna entered the bedroom of Kubja without wasting time. In the meantime, Kubja took her bath and smeared her body with sandalwood pulp. She dressed herself with nice garments, garments, valuable jewelry, ornaments, and flower garlands. After chewing betel nut and other intoxicating eatables and spraying herself with scents, she appeared before Krishna. Her smiling glance and moving eyebrows were full of feminine bashfulness as she stood gracefully before Lord Krishna, who is known as Madhava, the husband of the goddess of fortune. When Krishna saw Kubja hesitating to come before him, he immediately caught hold of her hand, which was decorated with bangles. With great affection, he dragged her near him and made her sit by his side. Simply by having previously supplied pulp of sandalwood to the Supreme Lord, Krishna, Kubja became free from all sinful reactions and eligible to enjoy with him. She then took Krishna's lotus feet and placed them on her breasts, which were burning with the blazing fire of lust. By smelling the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet, she was immediately relieved of all lusty desires. She was thus allowed to embrace Krishna with her arms and mitigate her long-cherished desire to have him as a visitor in her house. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that one must be freed of all material sinful reactions before one can engage in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Simply by supplying sandalwood pulp to Krishna, Kubja was thus rewarded. She was not trained to worship Krishna in any other way, therefore she wanted to satisfy him by her profession. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that the Lord can be worshipped even by one's profession, if it is sincerely offered for the pleasure of the Lord. Kubja told Krishna, My dear friend, kindly remain with me at least for a few days and enjoy with me. My dear lotus-eyed friend, I cannot leave you immediately. Please grant my request. As stated in the Vedic versions, the Supreme Personality of Godhead has multipotencies. According to expert opinion, Kubja represents the Bhu Shakti potency of Krishna, just as Srimati Radharani represents his Chit Shakti potency. Although Kubja requested Krishna to remain with her for some days, Krishna politely impressed upon her that it was not possible for him to stay. Krishna visits this material world occasionally, whereas his connection with the spiritual world is eternal. Krishna is always present either in the Vaikuntha planets or in Goloka Vrindavan planet, or in the Goloka Vrindavan planet. The technical term of his presence in the spiritual world is Aprakat Lila. After satisfying Kubja with sweet words, Krishna returned home with Uddhava. There is a warning in Srimad Bhagavatam that Krishna is not very easily worshipped, for he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the chief among the Vishnu Tattvas. To worship Krishna or have association with him is not very easy. Specifically, there is a warning for devotees attracted to Krishna through conjugal love. 
It is not good for them to desire sense gratification by direct association with Krishna. Actually, the activities of sense gratification are material. In the spiritual world, there are symptoms like kissing and embracing, but there is no sense gratificatory process as it exists in the material world. This warning is specifically for those known as sahajiyas, who take it for granted that Krishna is an ordinary human being. They desire to enjoy sex life with him in a perverted way. In a spiritual relationship, sense gratification is most insignificant. Anyone who desires a relationship of perverted sense gratification with Krishna must be considered less intelligent. His, menta his mentality requires to be reformed. After a while, Krishna fulfilled his promise to visit Akrura at his house. Akrura was in relationship with Krishna as his servitor, and Krishna wanted to get some service from him. He went there accompanied by Lord Balaram and Uddhava. When Krishna, Balaram and Uddhava approached the house of Akrura, Akrura came forward, embraced Uddhava and offered respectful obeisances, bowing down before Lord Krishna and Balaram. Krishna, Balaram and Uddhava offered him obeisances in return and were offered appropriate sitting places. When all were comfortably seated, Akrura washed their feet and sprinkled the water on his head. All three of them were very satisfied by Akrura's behavior. Akrura then bowed down before Krishna, putting his head on the ground. Then, placing Krishna's lotus feet on his lap, Akrura gently began to massage them. When Akrura was fully satisfied in the presence of Krishna and Balaram, his eyes filled with tears of love for Krishna and he began to offer his prayers as follows. My dear Lord Krishna and Balaram, it is very kind of you to have killed Kangsa and his associates. You have delivered the whole family of the Yadu dynasty from the greatest calamity. The Yadus will always remember your saving of their great dynasty. My dear Lord Krishna and Balaram, both of you are the original personality from whom everything has emanated, the original cause of all causes. You have inconceivable energy and you are all pervasive. There is no cause and effect gross or subtle, but you. You are the Supreme Brahman realized through the study of the Vedas. By your inconceivable energy, you are actually visible before us. You create this cosmic manifestation by your own potencies and you enter into it yourself as the five material elements, earth, water, fire, air, and sky are distributed in everything manifested by different kinds of bodies, so you alone enter the various bodies created by your own energy. You enter the body as the individual soul and independently as the super soul. Unquote. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that the material body is created by Krishna's inferior energy, that the living entities, the individual souls, are his parts and parcels, and that the super soul is his localized representation. Thus, while the material body, the living entity, and super soul constitute an individual living being, Originally, they are all different energies of the one Supreme Lord. Akrura continued, In the material world, you create, maintain, 
and dissolve the whole manifestation by the interactions of the three material qualities, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance. But you are not implicated in the activities of those material qualities, for your supreme knowledge is never overcome like the knowledge of the individual living entity. The Supreme Lord enters the material cosmos and causes creation, maintenance, and destruction in their due course. <clears throat> Whereas the part and parcel living entity enters the material element and has his material body created for him. The difference between the living entity and the Lord is that the living entity is part and parcel of the Supreme Lord and has the tendency to be overcome by the interactions of, material quali of the material qualities. Krishna, the Parabrahman or the Supreme Brahman, being always situated in full knowledge, is never overcome by such activities. Therefore, Krishna is called Achyuta, meaning he who never falls down. Krishna's knowledge of his spiritual identity is never overcome by material action, whereas the minute part and parcel living entities are prone to forget their spiritual identity due to material action. The individual living entities are eternally part and parcel of God, minute sparks of original fire, Krishna. Minute sparks of the original fire, Krishna. As sparks are prone to be extinguished, but not the blazing fire, so the living entities can be overcome by material activities, whereas Krishna never can. Akrura continued, Less intelligent men misunderstand your transcendental form to be made of material energy. But that concept is not at all applicable to you. Actually, you are all spiritual and there is no difference between you and your body. Therefore, there is no question of your being conditioned or liberated. You are ever liberated in any condition of life, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Only fools and rascals consider you an ordinary man. To consider your lordship one of us, conditioned by material nature, is a mistake due to our imperfect knowledge. When people deviate from the original knowledge of the Vedas, they try to identify the ordinary living entities with your lordship, who have appeared on this earth, earth in your original form to re-establish the real knowledge that the living entities are neither one with nor equal to the Supreme God. My dear Lord, you are always situated in uncontaminated goodness, Shuddha Sattva. Your appearance is necessary to re-establish actual Vedic knowledge, as opposed to the atheistic philosophy which tries to establish that God and the living entities are one and the same. My dear Lord Krishna, this time you have appeared in the home of Vasudev as his son with plenary, with your plenary expansion, Sri Balaram. Your mission is to kill all the atheistic royal families and destroy their huge military strength. You have advented yourself to minimize the burden of the world, and to fulfill this mission, you have glorified the dynasty of Yadu by appearing as one of its members. My dear Lord, today my home has been purified by your presence. I have become the most fortunate person in the world. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is worshipable by all different kinds of demigods, pitas, kings, emperors, and other living entities, and who is the super soul of everything, has come into my home. 
the water of his lotus feet purifies the three worlds, and now he has kindly come to my place. Who in the three worlds among factually learned men will not take shelter of your lotus feet and surrender unto you? Who, knowing well that no one can be as affectionate as you are to your devotees, is so foolish that he will decline to become your devotee. Throughout the Vedic literature, it is declared that you are the dearmost friend of every living entity. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, Suhridam Sarvabhutanam. You are the supreme personality of Godhead, completely capable of fulfilling the desires of your devotees. You are the real friend of everyone. In spite of giving yourself to your devotees, you are never depleted of your original potency. Your potency neither decreases nor increases in volume. My dear Lord, it is very difficult for even great mystic yogis and demigods to ascertain your movements or approach you. Yet, out of your causeless mercy, you have kindly consented to come to my home. This is the most auspicious moment in the journey of my material existence. By your grace only, I can now understand that my home, my wife, my children, and my worldly possessions are all bonds to material existence. Please, cut, cut the knot and save me from this entanglement of false society, friendship, and love. Lord Sri Krishna was very much pleased by Akrura's offering of prayers. With his smile captivating Akrura more and more, the Lord replied to his submissive devotional statements with the following sweet words. My dear Akrura, in spite of your submissiveness, I consider you my superior on the level with my father and teacher and most well-wishing friend. You are therefore to be worshipped by me. And since you are my uncle, I am always to be protected by you. I desire you to maintain me, for I am one of your own children. Apart from this filial relationship, an exalted devotee like you is always to be worshipped by everyone. Anyone who desires good fortune must, must offer his respectful obeisances unto personalities like you who are greater than the demigods. People worship the demigods when in need of some sense gratification, and the demigods offer benedictions to their devotees after being worshipped. But a devotee like you, Akrura, is always ready to offer people the greatest benediction. A saintly person or devotee is free to offer benedictions to everyone, whereas the demigods can offer benedictions only after being worshipped. One can take advantage of a place of pilgrimage only after going there and worshipping a particular demigod. Worshipping a particular demigod involves... Uh -huh. And worshipping a particular demigod involves waiting a long time for the fulfillment of one's desire but saintly persons like you, my dear Akrura, can immediately fulfill all the desires of a devotee. My dear Akrura, you are always our friend and well-wisher. You are always ready to act for our welfare. Kindly, therefore, go to Hastinapura and see what arrangements has been made for the Pandavas. Unquote. 
Krishna was anxious to know about the sons of Pandu because at a very young age they had lost their father. Being very friendly to his devotees, Krishna was anxious to know about them, and therefore he de deputed Akrura to go to Hastinapur and get information about the real situation. Krishna continued, I have heard that after King Pandu's death, his young sons, Yudhishthira, Bhima, Arjuna, Nakula, and Sahadeva, along with their widowed mother, have come under the charge of Dhritarashtra, who is to look after them as their guardian. But I have also heard that Dhritarashtra is not only blind from birth, but also blind in his affection for his cruel son Duryodhana. The five Pandavas are the sons of King Pandu, but Dhritarashtra, due to Duryodhana's plans and designs, is not favorably disposed towards them. Kindly go there and study how Dhritarashtra is dealing with the Pandavas. On receipt of your report, I shall consider how to favor them. Unquote. In this way, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, ordered Akrura to go to Hastinapura, and then he returned home, accompanied by Balaram and Uddhava. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 48th chapter of Krishna. Krishna pleases his devotees. Om Ajnana Chamirantasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Shakshurn Miditam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Chayam Rupa Kada Maiham Tadhati Shapadantikam Vandehan Shri Guru Shri Jatapada Kamalan, Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Shagrajatam, Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Stam Sadivam, Sadvaitam Savatutam, Parijana Sehitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padan, Sahagana Lulita, Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha, E Krishna Koruna Sindho, Dina Bandho Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostute, Tapta Kamsana Gaurangi, Radhe Brindavaneshari, Prashabhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hori Priye, Vansha Kopataru Pyascha, Kripa Sindho Pyevacha, Patita Nam Pavanevyo, Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Adaita Gadadhar, Shiva Shari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Krishna heard from Uddhava about his delivery of the message to the gopis and the inhabitants of Vrindavan. And then Krishna decides to fulfill his promise to visit Kubja, 
the hunchback woman whom he met when he entered Mathura. In the Bhagavad Gita, yeya tamam prapajyante tam stataiva pajamyaham. As the devotee approaches me, I reciprocate accordingly. And uh, elsewhere, yita pravitir bhutanam yena sarvam idam tatam sakarmana tamabhyarcha siddhim vindati manava. By mm, worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead through one's mm, occupation, one can become perfect. Anyone can become perfect by serving the Lord according to one's occupation. So this Kubja, it seems, had adopted the occupation of a society girl, and Krishna went to her house just to fulfill his promise. He went with Uddhava, the Acharyas say just to escape censure, because Uddhava was known to be a strict follower of Vedic principles. And he saw all the arrangements that were made there to create a sexual excitement. And he mm, quickly took her by the hand and uh, one thing after another. The Prabhupada makes the point that Krishna didn't go there for sense gratification. The first thing is Krishna's Atmaram. He's completely self-satisfied. Even the sages who worship Krishna are self-satisfied to say nothing of Krishna himself. Apart from that, Lakshmi Sahasra Satasam Brahma Sevyama. He's worshipped by thousands of goddesses of fortune with great love and attention. So Krishna has no need to seek enjoyment by going to the house of a society girl and therefore he went for her benefit. The Prabhupada says, just to turn her into a pure devotee. The incident is also meant for our instruction. There are those who may desire a conjugal relationship with Krishna, but they're cautioned here not to approach in the mood of Kubja. Because Kubja's intention was to satisfy her own senses with Krishna. The Rajabhadhu, the gopis, have no such desire. Their only desire is to satisfy Krishna's senses. Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam. This is bhakti. But Kubja had some desire to satisfy her senses. Krishna's senses had already been satisfied. He'd offered, she'd offered him sandalwood pulp at Mathura. Enough. He was satisfied. But now to turn for her benefit, he went there. So that by his association, she became purified of musty desires. So the Kubja requested Krishna that please stay with me, at least for some days. But Krishna expressed his inability to stay. And Prabhupada comments that Kubja represents the Bhu Shakti of the Lord, or the mm, material potency. Yes. And therefore, Krishna doesn't stay. He only occasionally visits the material world, although in the spiritual world he stays permanently. So Krishna, with some sweet words, took his leave and left along with Uddhava.
the again Prabhupada mentions that the Krishna's visiting Kubja was a warning to the Sahajas that don't try to approach me this way. Uh, the mm, pure Vaishnava's approach Krishna only according to the principles of Shastra for the satisfaction of Krishna's senses, not inventing something for their own sense gratification. They, Sahajas, yes. So then Krishna fulfilled his next promise. He'd promised Kubja, I'll visit your house. He'd promised Akura also on entering Mathura, I'll visit your house. Akura had said, said, please come and stay with me for some days. Krishna said, I'll come after some time. Akura was a little disappointed, but he, now Krishna is making good on his promise. So Krishna and Balaram went there with Uddhava and were nicely received, seated, and uh, Akura began to massage Krishna's lotus feet, and Akura offered the Lord prayers. Again, these are quite, what shall we say, full of, of tattva, full of full of philosophical truth about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You are the original person from whom everything comes, the cause of all causes. You're all pervasive. You have inconceivable energies. You're the uh, Supreme Brahman realized through the Vedic study. You are uh, visible only by your own energy. As the material elements enter the body of every living being, you also enter everyone as the super soul and as the soul. The soul is also non-different from Krishna, although it's a tiny part of Krishna. Jivanam Sarvabhuteshu, in Krishna, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, uh, I'm the jiva in, in all living bodies. So the jiva is also a manifestation of Krishna, but only as a tiny spark, not as the fire. You create, maintain, and dissolve the whole material world, but you're not implicated in those activities. You're not overcome by the energy of maya, and therefore you're called a chuta, infallible. The less intelligent think of your material, your body as material, but there's no difference between your body and yourself. Your identity is entirely spiritual, and only fools think you an ordinary human being. You come to reestablish Vedic knowledge, and now you've appeared in the home of Vasudev, along with your plenary expansion, Lord Balaram, Parachanaya Sadhunam, Pinashaya Jadushkritam. Now my home has become purified by your presence. I've become the most fortunate person in the world. When you are so affectionate to your devotees, who is such a fool that he declined to become a devotee? You are the real friend of everyone and you have your potency neither increases nor decreases. The, even the great mystic yogis and demigods can't approach you 
but you've kindly consented to come to my home. And this is the most auspicious moment in the journey of my material existence. Imagine Krishna, the personality of God that has come to his home. I now understand that my home, my wife, my children, and my worldly possessions are all bonds to material existence. Please cut the knot and save me. But this is also Vedic truth repeated again and again. For some time, uh, one may enter family life and be engaged in the prescribed duties of a householder. But one should know that ultimately, attachment to wife, children, home, and so on, is the attachment of maya. So the saints visit the homes of householders, ultimately to free them from these misconceptions. But here, the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself has personally come. So Lord Krishna was very pleased by the prayers of Uddhava, and he accepted them and honored Akura, you're my superior because you're my uncle and because you're an exalted devotee. Anyone who wants his own good fortune should um, worship a devotee like you. The demigods only offer some temporary benefit. The But you are able to offer the greatest, greatest benediction. So now Krishna asks Akura to visit Hastinapur to find out what's going on with the Pandavas. And that will be the subject of the next chapter. Yeah, we have a short class today. So what what's our, what questions might we have? Yes. Where? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the, thank you, Maharaj, for being mm -hmm. here. Thank you, Maharaj, for being here. I have a question. Sorry. I'm nervous. Um, you talked in the purport, it talked a lot about the sahajas, and Prabhupada often warns us about the dangers of sahaja, especially with the conjugal ras. In um, a, diff a few different parts of the Bhagavatam, it said that one, it, from the, it says one can approach Krishna through lust, anger, fear, or pure love. Any way, just attach yourself to Krishna. And later, Prabhupada explains that Krishna will deal with those lusty desires. It's also said at the end of the Ras Lila, they should hear about the pastimes of the gopis in order to become purified and a few other places. So I'm wondering how um, it seems that Shukadeva Goswami is saying, whatever you do, just think about Krishna. Even if you're envious of him, like Kamsa, you want to kill him. Or if you want to enjoy him, like Kubja, just engage your mind in Krishna. But then Prabhupada said in a few different ways, Sukhade says that, but Prabhupada says, be very careful about the conjugal ras. And, and, and Rupa Goswami says, we don't want to become envious like mm -hmm. Kamsa. Yeah, one thing is the sahajas, prakrita sahajas is the technical term, materialistic uh, devotees who take everything as, as in an easy, easygoing fashion. One thing is that they're generally not unmixed in their attraction to Krishna. They're attracted to Krishna. They want to be in a conjugal relationship. But then what do they do? Because their hearts are not purified, they enact their, hmm, what shall we say, their desires uh, on, on, the, on the material platform. So uh, they imagine themselves to be like Krishna, and then they, they find a Radha, or a few of them, 
They, they find their own gopis and they uh, play with some concocted philosophy. Hmm? Or they imagine that they're able to connect with Krishna very easily without following regulative principles. Uh, they can smoke, they can drink, they can associate with women, they can do anything. And still they can attain the personal association of Krishna and they broadcast their good fortune and being mad after Krishna at the same time that they can't give up smoking to say nothing of giving up uh, illicit sex. So this is called avidhi purvakam, against the, uh, against the rules. The, you'll get something, probably gives the example, you put a pot on the stove, it'll boil, but you put the pot way up here. So there, in one sense, probably in one purport, only one in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada says it's like a future hope for them, because they're attracted to Krishna at least. Something is there. But they're so far away, and their method is so off, off course, and they're not properly guided to attain perfection in any relationship with Krishna, one should be properly got, guided. Advidhi pranipatena pranipashtena said. They're not properly guided. They're guided by someone else who's misguided, or they're not guided at all. And so they misunderstand who Krishna is, who they are, what the relationship is between themselves and Krishna. And so they mix the highest thing in the spiritual world with the lowest thing in the material world. So progress will be very difficult. It's their good fortune that they're attracted to Krishna. Kubja was single-mindedly attracted to Krishna. And they're not single-mindedly attracted to Krishna. Hmm? So for so many reasons, and it becomes a big subject matter, the path of the Prakriti Sahajas is uh, condemned. Hmm? Even to approach Krishna out of anger is praised, but not for the devotees. Not for the devotees. It was fortunate for Kamsa that he, after all, he had a relationship with Krishna. But it was inimical. And therefore it didn't count as devotional service. Devotional service is anakulyena Krishna. It's performed favorably. And Kangsa was approaching Krishna unfavorably. Even approaching unfavorably, he got tremendous benefit. But the recommendation is manmana bhavamad bhakta. You become my devotee, not my enemy. Hmm? So the recommendation is that you follow the path of the acharyas, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami. Hmm? Then you can genuinely attain a relationship with Krishna in the mature stage. Otherwise, by inventing some process or by imagination, the result will not be achieved. And instead, one gets uh, involved in material entanglement. Aprapya mamni vartante mrityu samsara Is that okay? Yes, thank you. Hmm. We might take another question or two. Yes. I have to, but maybe I should choose. Okay. <laughs> um, it, uh, often we hear when we speak about Govardhan Hill that... Uh, when we speak about... Govardhan Hill. Govardhan Hill. They say, yeah, uh, can Krishna this create... This is on the subject. It's on, sub it's, I'm getting... Yeah. <laughs> that um, can Krishna create something, a, a mountain that he cannot lift? And then they say, yes, he can. And then he increases his strength and he can lift it. 
But here it is said that um, his potency never increases nor decreases. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that also. Never increases or decreases. That's a, a general truth. Krishna is absolute, and therefore un, he's abhikarya, unchanging. Mm, he's unchanging. But elsewhere we read in Chaitanya Charitam, and no, it's always dynamically increasing. In relationship with this pleasure potency, the, he's always in, his, he and his energy are always increasing. So one is the general understanding and one is the more specific understanding or more detailed understanding. We, we get a model of, of um, a cell. You know, it's got a wall, and it's got a nucleus, and it's got, uh, what, protoplasm inside, you know, and that, that's kind of it. But then if you really get into the cell, you find out that there's a lot more to it. So there's a beginning understanding and a more advanced understanding. The beginning understanding is Krishna is unchangeable. His energy neither increases nor decreases. He's absolute. But then in Chaitanya Charitamrita, until we get an advanced understanding, and in the association of his pleasure potency, he's always increasing. Is that okay? Hmm. And then it was mentioned that Krishna is self-satisfied, mm -hmm. and uh, so are the sages. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, what we read and notice maybe in ourselves is that when there's dissatisfaction, we look for Krishna. We look for Krishna more because we need him. Mm -hmm. So if you're self-satisfied, it reminds me, like if the sages are self-satisfied, reminds me of the demigods that are too self-satisfied to go into spiritual life. Yeah, know? that's the general problem. There's a discussion of that in Brihad Bhagavatamrita. Again, there's in the second part, right? There's discussion of the this, this self-satisfied sages, and it's sort of deprecated or, um, yeah, criticized. They're self-satisfied. So they... They don't really make any progress toward the personality of Godhead because they're self-satisfied. They know I'm not this body. They know I'm spirit soul. They know mm, they have no material attraction. They're beyond all of these things. So they're self-satisfied, which amounts to complacent. In, in the Bhagavad Gita, what is that? In the mode of goodness? Hmm. Sukhasangena badnati ganasangena chani. That one becomes conditioned to the sense of happiness, sukhasangena badnati, and ganasangena, and knowledge. This is what happens to the sages. They, they're perfectly situated in goodness, so they're happy, they're full of knowledge, they're satisfied, and therefore they're still bound by material. Uh, connection. The, the mode of goodness captures them. They're free from passion, free from ignorance, but still caught by goodness. Hmm. So, therefore, it's rare that they become Krishna conscious. But they can be. And the example is the Kumaras, who smelled the tulsi offered at the lotus feet and became attracted to serve. Uh, there are examples like that. Now, Shukadeva Goswami, he completely self-satisfied, but he became attracted by hearing the glories of the Lord. Therefore, Atmaramas Chamuniya, even the Atmaramas, self-satisfied sages, can be attracted to Krishna, Itambhuta Gunavali, because of his transcendental quality. That okay? But then self-satisfaction, would that be a result of Krishna consciousness? No. Their self-satisfaction is a result of uh, spiritual realization. They're, they're sages, hmm? Brahmabhuta prasanadna. Nishochati nakankshati. They're self-realized, so they have no material desires. They have no, mm, nothing to lament over. Samasarveshu bhuteshu. For them, everything's the same. I meant if if uh, we but are. But mud bhaktin love a tape around. They become attracted to Krishna. 
if if we become Krishna conscious, mm -hmm. then we are self satisfied. More than self satisfied. Oh. <laughs> but that means like self is automatically included in the package. But the sages tend to be inactive, self satisfied. The devotees, are, it, once it, Vayam tu nava trip yama. We we're never satisfied. We want to go on hearing and, talk, and chanting about Krishna. Hmm? We want to go on serving Krishna. So it's not the self-satisfaction of the sages. It's beyond that. Any last question? Yes, Rukmini. Uh, Marjo is wondering that in Vedic culture, is it considered sinful to visit the society girls? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is against our four regulative principles, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, it, Krishna does this act in somewhat of an outreach kind of method, because he sees that um, he sees that Kubja has an inclination uh, to spiritual. Yeah, Prabhupada, he gives the, the proverb that the moon doesn't withhold its light even from the home of a crooked person. Yeah. Krishna, he doesn't reject anyone. She approached Krishna, it may not have been exactly in the standard acceptable way, but she, she was attracted. And so uh, that's mentioned in the, in the entering Mathura chapter that Krishna saw that she was a simple girl, she was attracted. So go, all right, I'll come visit you later. So he didn't refuse. And all right, she's attracted, come on. That's the, the nature of Krishna. He, even on a, the home of the crooked person, the, the moon doesn't withhold its shining. I remember I was at an airport with Srila Prabhupada. He was leaving for somewhere. And we were all gathered around him, a lot of devotees. And there's this boy came who might have been associating with the devotees, but he was clearly crazy, probably been taking drugs. And, you know, you'd, you'd spot him in a second that here's a, a crazy boy. And he had some sort of wacko sign or the, on his little placard on his around his neck, that this boy is, you know, not tacked down properly. <laughs> and he started moving through the crowd toward Prabhupada. And I was watching him, you know, he's getting closer, he's getting closer. And, you know, and then he, like, threw himself in, in the direction of Prabhupada. And I, you just sort of like, if I recall, like almost landed on top of him, you know, pull him, pull maybe not even almost to pull him aside, but basically he'd thrown himself at Prabhupada's feet, and Prabhupada waved me off. The Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay. And who would like to lead Kirtan to this evening? We will go a little more over time. I haven't like gone this far. If my disciple can go over time, I can go over time. <laughs> <laughs> You're leading, okay. Uh, well, we'll give you this microphone.
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Shri Bhakti Vedanta Shami Raj Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Sikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vashadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gop Gopinath Shama Kund Radha Kund Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Tham Ki Jai Navadip Tham Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Jamana Mai Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Go Prem Anande Hari Hari Bo. Thank you all very much. Now, just looking at our schedule, Monday we're skipping because Kadamba Khan and Maharaj and I will be doing a program together Monday. Monday morning into the afternoon. So, right, we skip? Is that what we do? Do we skip Monday? No, we continue Monday. What day do we skip? We don't skip any days. Okay. I skip my meeting with Kadamba Khan and Marsh tomorrow because, okay, because of, of his meeting. So, and we, we're done with our, our five, well, 5.30 meetings for the week, right? So, no change. Only you have to keep me straight. Everything else is, is clear. Okay, so good. Anything else on schedules? No, it's just my schedule that I have to keep straight. All right. Thank you all. Hare Krishna. <laughs>